I think blockchain is probably here to stay. Um, it's uh, it's happened very seldomly before that we made a discovery and went back and, and ignored it completely. Um, it's uh, it's certainly a step into the right direction. It's uh, it challenges the uh, old way of doing things, and by challenging all the old way of doing things, it is actually providing a, a, a progress. My name is Christian Decker. I currently work for Blockstream Corporate uh, on the uh, Lightning Network. Uh, which aims to solve the scalability issues for Bitcoin once and for all. If we talk about blockchains in general, we talk about operations that are distributed to every participant in the network. And every participant in the network needs to verify that this operation is valid, uh, that it is applicable to the local state, and that we can actually confirm it. Um, so clearly, if everybody in, in the world uh, suddenly starts buying their coffees with, uh, with Bitcoin, then we run into a problem that we now have millions and millions of transactions per day um, that, need to be, uh, that need to be distributed, that need to be verified, and that need to be stored forever. Um, now, that clearly doesn't scale. Uh, uh, simply the fact that we need to distribute these massive amounts of data gives us a huge problem. There is two tendencies. One is we centralize, uh, where we have uh, a really powerful intermediary that does the verification and does the modification of the state uh, on behalf of somebody, and they can actually throw in some real, uh, really strong hardware to do it. And the other one is to say, hey, we need to lighten the load on the, uh, on the network itself. And this lightening comes mostly in the form of, uh, of off-chain transactions. Off-chain in this case means that we perform our operations without committing them to, uh, to everybody in the world. We, transfer, uh, we perform our transfers offline, just between the two participants. And once we agree on the final state that we want to commit to, only then we go to the, uh, to the Bitcoin blockchain and say, hey, this is the final state, please enforce it from now on. Who would have thought that such a technology that came out from nowhere with uh, no backing whatsoever could ever take on the, est uh, the established uh, uh, transfer market, the established banks and the established way of doing uh, payments? Why would people start putting money into Bitcoin itself? So that, that's, that's what I was unsure about. It's, it's not the technology part. Um, but seeing it grow up is, is immensely uh, rewarding. Um, starting from a technical uh, interest, it has now become uh, one, of the, one of the really, really, how should I say this? Uh, it's, it, it's now one of the most innovative uh, technologies out there. It's maybe the technology most people fear. Uh, and the technology that most people are putting their trust behind. Um, so starting from a toy, it now became this worldwide movement. And what's especially interesting for me is that it was a grassroots movement from the technology sector, not, not sort of the uh, movement of, uh, of established businesses trying to uh, trying to get in uh, to, to find a new selling point. It's, it's, it's really a bottom-up movement from, from us geeks. It definitely feels like some of the initiatives and some of the, uh, of the uh, companies that are springing up left and right do not have the technical foundation uh, that are required. Uh, to build a business on top of blockchain or uh, Bitcoin. Um, it, uh, mo some, some of these initiatives are, to be honest, technically impossible. Uh, and some of these are trivial applications. And very few of, uh, of these are, are really true applications of what, what blockchain technology and Bitcoin is all about. 
Um, what I what I dislike is this this sprawling use of, of blockchain as a buzzword, as a selling point, so to speak. Um, if a blockchain gives you really a, a true advantage, then it's okay. You you can obviously advertise that as such. But if uh, if you're using blockchain just as a moniker to put on your uh, on your uh, product without it actually providing any advantage whatsoever, then that's a bit false advertising. It's probably not as much as a threat as many people think, uh, because it's just attacking one of the uh, one of the services the bank provides. Um, the other services, like the investment uh, system and uh, the um, the, uh, the possibility of, of uh, accruing uh, interest on top of your of your savings, that's much more interesting to a bank because there that's where the money is made. Um, it might be dangerous for uh, services that are actually reliant on uh, uh, on this money transmitting business, uh, such as a business specializing on remittances. Um, namely, sending money back to uh, back home to your parents if you're an immigrant and uh, and emigrated for work, um, and there the the actual fees, the actual transfer fees for for these remittances are a huge business. If you want people to use your technology, you don't only need to show what the advantages are, but you also need to educate them about how to secure, the, uh, secure it, how to, uh, what the downsides are, and give the whole picture. It's, it's, not, it's not a sales pitch, it's, it's an educational effort. Um, and I think that having, approaching the problem from both sides will give us the, uh, the, best, of, uh, the, the best possible outcome. Now, there's people who simply don't want to uh, take care about their own uh, assets or their own bitcoins or their own state tracking machine. And that's fine. Uh, for that, we can, we can build services that, that actually offer this as a service to, to customers. So, and that, that's where banks may come back. It's always nice to talk to somebody when, when you're unsure about something. And, how, uh, and being able to trust them that they, that they are actually telling you something which is secure or not. So banks may come, uh, make, uh, come back as a, uh, as a service provider on top of the blockchain technology itself. That's really hard to say. So from a technical point of view, it's definitely not a revolution. It's an evolution from systems we, we knew before, from uh, technology that is between 20 to 30 years old, especially when we, when we talk about distributed computing and distributed systems. Um, where it becomes revolutionary is the sort of impact it has. Uh, the attention it has gotten from big established businesses, the, uh, the potential for disruption it now has, uh, and the, um, the huge impact it has on, on, on existing systems. So I would probably say it's, it's a hard question. Uh, it is revolutionary as uh, if, if considered together with its impact it has today. There tend to be rumors about this state or that state making Bitcoin completely illegal and banning it to be for, for its population to use. Uh, but one of the key features of, of blockchain and, and Bitcoin is that it's really hard to, to control. It's outside of, uh, of the uh, of the control of any single actor, uh, and that includes a state. Um, so banning the use of Bitcoin may reduce uh, the, um, the use of uh, in, in that state, but it will definitely not destroy Bitcoin as a whole. And uh, so I, I tend to think that, that Bitcoin will survive no matter what happens 
uh, on a per state level. So I, I think it's going to be a gradual process of, uh, of adoption. It's uh, definitely not going to replace all previous systems that, that are there. I mean, after all, cash is a really useful tool. Why should we, why should we abolish the use of cash? Um, and I think that Bitcoin is a useful tool. Uh, and I think the banking system is, is a useful tool uh, for certain uh, services. Um, so adding new tools to our toolbox always makes us better. Um, and the use of one tool might dwindle over time, but I don't think we'll ever replace cash or replace all banks or um, that Bitcoin is, uh, is going to be the only, uh, only system that, uh, that is going to exist. I think we will have a gradual, a gradual adoption of, of Bitcoin over time as people realize the potential of Bitcoin and what it can be used for. Uh, and I think, yeah, if, if we come back to 2020, I think that, that we will have widespread use of, of digital currencies uh, in the general population. Um, and that may also come from the fact that these, uh, these systems become easier to use for every, everyday transactions and that more and more companies start accepting Bitcoin. I don't think it's that there, that there is this enemy that, that, uh, that is to be fought. It's, it's more of a, uh, let, let's try to build a new system that, is, that has better trade-offs, that has better features, that has less downsides. Um, and, and let's make it work. Um, there is no opponent in this, in this game. Everybody wants to make progress. Um, and that includes the established businesses as well, because they are jumping on, uh, on, on, these, uh, on these opportunities as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it is actually a huge family that, that just tries to move forward together. I think most of the people who are involved in this are, are just really fascinated by, by the potential and by the technology itself. I mean, for me, it was this discovering this paper was, uh, was short of a revelation. It's, uh, it's technical interest that drives me and, and most of the people that, that I work with are, are driven by, by, this, by this technical interest. Um, it's, it's very interesting to have this sort of impact, which is definitely not common for, for people that are working on technology. It's bigger than, than myself and it's, uh, and I don't have to, I, I don't have to, I, I can actually contribute by, with my personal interest to this bigger uh, thing that is this whole blockchain movement. Finding that, that something doesn't work is only the first part of change. Uh, actually implementing that change, actually providing the tools to enact change, that's the really hard part. And that needs, uh, that needs a lot of effort. That needs a lot of smart people sitting together, collaborating and, and making the tools that, that help us enact this change. And I think that Bitcoin is definitely one of the tools that, that might, might help in that, in that regard. I mean, Bitcoin and, and blockchain are incredibly useful tools that, we, that can be used to change a lot of our daily lives. Um, but we need to be clear about the advantages and the disadvantages that, that this tool brings with it. And we absolutely need to make sure that these systems are secure and usable for everybody to use. Otherwise, we could just go back to our previous system and be done with it.